Okay, let's start. First, LOS. Explain how the value of forward contract is determined at initiation during the life of the contract and at expiration. Okay, so let's let's think of it this way. Let us say you are looking at an asset which has got spot price of 100. Now, you want to build a forward contract on that. So, quick revision of what forwards are. It's a contractual obligation between two parties. The party which is long will have a right and obligation both to buy at a pre-specified price and the party which is short will have a right and obligation to sell. So, you are intending to enter into forward contract which has got maturity of one year. Now, risk-free rate is 10% in the market and what assumption we make here at this stage is that it is okay to borrow at 10%, it is okay to lend at 10%. Okay, so lending is generally not a problem but where it becomes theoretical is where it also assumes you to borrow. So, we are going to borrow or lend if required at the rate of 10%. We want to know at what price this forward contract should be available. Should it be available at a price of 120, should it be available at a price of 90 or 100 or we cannot say. So let us assume now that this contract is available at a price of 130. Okay, So let me repeat again what do we have here. We have a asset which has got spot price of 100, risk free rate of 10%, maturity of the contract is 1 year and it is available at a price of 30. With this scenario, is there anything that you can do to exploit this situation and earn some profit for yourself? Can we earn some profit out of this scenario? Yes, how will we do that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do we do is, first set of action, number one, I go to a bank and then I will borrow 100 rupees. Once I have borrowed 100 rupees, step number two is that I will buy the stock at spot price. Correct? So that means it will cost me how much? 100. Then simultaneously, I will also enter into short side of the contract. Now how to decide short or long, we will discuss about that later on. So I went to a bank, I borrowed 100 rupees, then I went and I bought a stock from it and then I also entered into short side of the contract. Let's see what, ha what happens after one year. I have a short side of the contract which means I have a right and obligation to sell at what price? 130. So. I already have a stock with me and I have a right to sell this stock at 130. So I sell it at 130 and I receive that money. I take that money and I will go to the bank and how much will I be required to pay to bank? 110 which is original principal plus interest. How much I am left with? 20 and this 20 is my arbitrage profit. So right on day 0 when this scenario existed, I knew that I knew that there is a possibility that I can earn an arbitrage profit of 20. That means that this, if the price remains 130, then there would be too many people who would be willing to short at 130. So the price needs to reduce. And at what price they wouldn't have any arbitrage? 110. So as of now, with this scenario, it appears as if 110 is the no arbitrage price. This kind of a scenario where you exploit the arbitrage, we call this as cash and ca carry arbitrage. Okay, why do we call this as cash and carry? I first took the cash and then I carried the stock for one entire year. So therefore cash and carry arbitrage which gives me a profit of 20. Are we clear with this?
yield that you get based on the forward contract price and the RFR. Hmm. Yeah, so that 20 was dependent based on forward price of 130, RFR of 10% and spot price of 100. Okay. Let's move further. Are you done writing this? Okay. Now let me plot a inverse scenario here. I'm assuming that you've written this. Let us say now your spot is 100. Again, RFR is 10%. Again, we would say that maturity is one year. Now you spot a forward contract which gives you a contract price of 80. Is there anything that we can do to exploit arbitrage out of this scenario? Yes, what should we do now? Short the asset and go long on the contract. So, step Number one, I will short sell the asset. Step number two, that when I short sell the asset, how much money will I receive? 100, because 100, the asset is as of now 100 rupees. So I sold it without having it. So to square off in future, I would be required to buy it, correct? Then step number two, that I will deposit this 100 into the bank or whatever risk-free security which will earn me 10% per annum. So I sold the security, I am making a theoretical assumption that I would receive 100 and I will deposit that at the rate of 10%. And step number 3, I would simultaneously take a long position on the contract. Now do I have to pay anything when I enter into a long position? No. What do I pay? So forward contract. So we not necessarily are required to pay anything at inception. What happens after one year? So this is what I did today. What happens one year from now? One year from now, my bank will give me how much? 110. Out of that, I will take out 80 rupees. 30 rupees I will take home. Okay, because this 30 rupees is my profit. I will take out 80 rupees and I will use this forward contract. So I will say I will exercise forward contract because I have a right to buy at 80. I will give out the 80, get the stock. Once I have the stock, I will square off my short position. What do you mean by square off? That when I buy, if I buy a stock, the position is squared off when I sell it later on. Here it's the other way around. You've sold it first to square off the position you have to buy the stock. So it is bought. The position is square off. The 30 rupees is my arbitrage profit. And of course now this is called as reverse cash and carry arbitrage. So now to avoid the arbitrage, to avoid that possibility of making arbitrage, what should have been the price here? 110. Because at 110, I would have given the entire amount to exercise the contract. I wouldn't have been left with anything. So what it basically means is that if it was less than 180, sorry, less than 110, there was arbitrage. If it was more than 110, there is arbitrage. This is the price at which there is no arbitrage. And this is called theoretical no arbitrage price. Theoretical no arbitrage future oblique forward price. 110. Is this clear? So how do you calculate this? May I delete the screen? Theoretical no arbitrage future oblique forward price. So, we 
May I clear up the screen now? Hmm? So let's do an example. So first let's do a formula for this. That a forward price should be equal to spot price into 1 plus risk free rate of return raised to n. n being the maturity of the contract. Now we would use this formula if the compounding is discrete. Discrete means annual, monthly, quarterly. If the compounding is continuous then we will say forward is equal to s into e raised to rt. r being the rate of return, t being the maturity. So most of the questions that they have solved in curriculum they have implicitly assumed continuous compounding and most of the question that they have solved in the private notes that we would be using they have used discrete compounding. So on the exam it would be clearly specified what kind of a compounding is to be used. Okay, And if nothing is mentioned then you can simply use annual compounding. Okay, So if they simply say 10% and if nothing is mentioned you can assume a annual compounding. Okay. So let's do examples. Yes, as of now. As of now. <laughs> Let us say we have a asset which has got spot price today of 120. Risk free rate of return is 8% per annum compounded annually. We have a forward contract with maturity of 3 months. Find out what should be theoretical no arbitrage future price. No. Yeah, it could be, could be. It could be, sorry. How much? Four one. Okay. How do you solve this? If you want to use the formula 120 into 1 plus 8 percent raised to 3 by 12 which is 0.25. If you want to use your financial calculator second clear TVM second clear TVM 120 is the present value 8 is your IY N is 0.25 Compute future value. 122.33. So, this is the correct answer. If you keep your IY as 2% and keep 1 as N, that would be incorrect. Huh. Hmm. So, what you did is you assumed annual compounding to be monthly. 8% per annum is not equal to 8 divided by 12 per month. So 8% per annum is 8% per annum. So when you want it for a quarter, N has to be adjusted. IY can never be changed. So if it's 8% per annum, your IY has to be 8. If it is 6% per annum compounded semi-annually, your IY has to be 3, irrespective of what period you are compounding it. Is it clear? Okay, next try, next one. N months. Months, months. Because maturity is given in months. Had the maturity been 89 days, then you would say 89 by 365 days. So depending on maturity is given in what parameters? Yes, of course. Yes, in terms of days 365. Yes, any questions or doubts here? No. Let's do slightly higher level difficulty. Do you want me to increase the level? Take it. So one continuous compounding and then we move further. Spot price 100. Continuously compounded risk free rate of return is 
maturity is 18 months find out theoretical no arbitrage future price One twenty five point This is day one of level two. We shouldn't struggle with time value of money today. Huh. One twenty five point two three. Akriti, Kritika back there, Ashish. Again, are we good to move? In case if you haven't got the answer, have point one five on your screen. So press fifteen, press the person button. It would get point one five on the screen. Into eighteen divided by twelve, which was actually into one point five, but into eighteen divided by twelve equal to. Is that point two two five? Now say second e raised to x. So that will give you one point. Two five something. How much? One point two five. So now you've converted your continuous rate to a discrete and multiply that with hundred. It will give you one twenty five point two three. Okay. Had this not been eighteen months, had this been nine months, then your answer would have been into nine by twelve and then second e raised to x. So simply e raised to r t r being the rate which is to be in decimals, t is the time period. Which can either be fraction or a full. If it's two years, it can be two. But if it's one and a half year, one point five. If it's six months, point five. Three months, point two five. Are we good to move here? Now, how do you price a forward contract which pays where underlying asset? Pays dividend. How do you price a forward contract where underlying as is pays dividend or gives you any cash flow? For example, now let us say we are at time zero. The spot price of the asset is hundred rupees. Six months from today. You are expecting a dividend amount of forty rupees. I am intentionally exaggerating. We have kept a very high amount of dividend to understand the concept. You are looking at a forward contract with maturity of twelve months. Okay, so you want to know that what should be a forward contract available which has got maturity of twelve months. Let us assume interest rate is ten percent per annum. Let us assume that interest rate is ten percent per annum. Now, first, to understand this carefully, for the timing, I decide that I want to ignore the dividend. Okay, so if that is the case, how much should be my forward contract price? Hundred and ten. So by ignoring that dividend, my forward price came out to be hundred and ten. Now see how people will exploit this. Someone will come. He will buy the stock today by borrowing hundred. So borrow hundred today. This is what we are doing today. So he will borrow hundred. Then second, with that borrowed money, he will buy stock. And third, he will enter into short position on the forward contract. Okay. What happens after six months? Since he is the owner of the stock as of now, he will receive dividend of forty. Clear? After one year, he will come. So when he received that dividend of forty, he will again invest that in the bank at the rate of ten percent for six months. Six months me, you are receiving your dividend. In the middle of the year, you receive the dividend, reinvest at the rate of six percent. After one year, 
he owns the stock he's got a right to sell so he will exercise or he will execute his short position and he will sell the stock that he already owns at a price of 110 and with this money he will pay back bank loan okay so what is happening after one after one year see let me repeat this again there is a stock which has got spot price of 100 rupees today there is a expected dividend exactly six months from now amount is 40 we are looking at one year forward contract no arbitrage price if we decide to ignore the dividend that price will come out to be 110 simply 100 plus 10 percent if the price is 110 he will borrow 100 buy the stock and he will take the short position today after six months he will receive dividend of 40 after one year he's anyways got a short position he is also owning the stock he will execute the contract he will sell that stock at a price of 110 and using that money he will pay back the bank loan what he is left with is the future value of this 100 right and how much so let's calculate second clear TVM second clear TVM 40 is the present value 10 is the IY not 5 10 is the IY 0.5 is the N compute future value 40 so 41.95 is this is this is arbitrage profit yes because there is no claim on this dividend isn't it he is keeping that for himself so if there is to be no arbitrage then he should have been given the right to sell that stock at a price of 110 minus 41.95 so how much is that 68.05 so imagine now instead of 110 had the future price been 68.05 then what happens after one year he gets to sell the stock at 68.05 so he gets that money plus he gets the future value of dividend 41.95 he gets total 110 he pays back the bank loan there is no amount left with him which means how do you calculate the forward contract in case of underlying asset which gives you cash flow forward contract is equal to spot into 1 plus RFR raised to N minus that cash flow which is dividend into 1 plus RFR which would be let me call this as N minus let's say the date of dividend let's call this as D so N minus D which means we took future value of this 40 dividend for six months and 100 future value for one year the same thing is do you want me to repeat this again yes no maybe yes okay are you done writing this let's do one more example let us say spot price today is 500 we have a expected value of dividend of let us say 91.9 interest rate RFR is let us say 20% per annum we want to find out this is 6 months this is 12 months this is time 0 we want to find out a no arbitrage theoretical forward price okay. now for 5 to 10 minutes stop writing just try to understand this then I'll give you sufficient time to write because anyways you won't understand what I've written so first you need to understand what I speak spot is 500 RFR is 20 percent if I decide to ignore the dividend then no arbitrage theoretical forward price would approximately be or in fact it would be 600 so let us say if I keep at 600 
at this 600 what i'm trying to prove is that there is an arbitrage possibility and therefore 600 should not be the price so we're trying to see how that arbitrage opportunity exists so what do i do today what do i do in six months and what happens after one year three sets of actions what happens today number one i will go to a bank and i will borrow 500 at the rate of 20 percent number two with that money i will buy stock number three that i will take a short position on the forward contract why because i am finding that forward contract to be overvalued it's more than what it should have been so i'm taking a short position what happens in six months this is where i receive dividend of 91.9 and then i would reinvest that at the rate of 20% for 6 months. What happens after 1 year? So number 1, I have a stock with me which I purchased a year ago here. I purchased a stock plus I also had a short position on the forward contract which gives me a right and obligation to sell my stock. At what price I am going to sell my stock? 600. So with this I will re receive rupees 600. I will take this 600 and with this money I will pay off bank the entire amount of loan of 600 so my bank liability is now clear because I had borrowed 500 I have paid 600 20 percent bank liability is clear what I am left with myself is this dividend right and how much receive how much dividend do, will I receive approximately 100 this 100 I get to take home free of cost so this is my arbitrage if this arbitrage was to be avoided what should be done that if this arbitrage was to be avoided this should have been 500 because had my forward been 500 then I receive 500 by executing the contract I receive 100 from dividend 600 I pay off the bank loan I'm not left with anything so in this case the theoretical no arbitrage forward or future price is equal to spot into 1 plus RFR for one year here minus dividend or interim cash flow into 1 plus RFR for 6 months from the date of receipt to the date of expiry so this amount is 600 this amount is 100 theoretical no arbitrage forward price is 500 this is the intuition behind the formula so now you can write down and we'll start doing certain questions on this. I mean, before entering the contract, the question yeah, you can probably ask is, how do I know six months in advance there is going to be a dividend? Okay, so we don't know that. So not necessarily six months, but you would definitely know one month. Isn't it? Companies declare in advance. So you definitely know one month or two months. Uh, six months probably because in India, uh, for this financial year, I will propose a dividend which would be paid next year after it's approved in AGM. So again, there's a possibility I will know three or four or five months in advance. And if I know that, then that needs to be factored in the forward price or future price. No. 600 was incorrect so that's what I what I was trying to prove that 600 should not be the price if there's a 600 there's an arbitrage profit the correct price should have been 500 yeah we assume 600 to prove that 600 gives arbitrage and therefore it should not be 600 Do you want to further increase the level? Let's practice a bit more on the same level. Mm -hmm.
Hmm. She's asked a good question. What she says is that when the dividend is paid, so what question she's asked? When the dividend is paid, price of the stock decreases, and a contract follows the price of the stock. So automatically, when the price would be decreased, automatically the price will come down of the contract. So why? Ha. Huh. Perfect. That's the answer. That that happens in case of future contract. In case of forward, the price is locked. It doesn't change. Once you've entered, it remains the same, right? But then, how do you get that price by this calculation? Yes. So even in future, even in future, that possibility of price decreasing is factored today itself. It's not that that price of future will decrease after the dividend is paid. No. because if that is the case it gives you an arbitrage opportunity okay so see why this question is arising because there is some lack of clarity in terms of uh, how does future contract operate vis a vis forward okay so at this stage think of it this way that if forward is 500 and future is 600 or other way around anyone would exploit an arbitrage so it has to be same and therefore if this is 500 even future would be 500 Isn't it? If forward is, if they are different prices, anyone can exploit an arbitrage there. Yes. So, see, it it amounts to the same thing. In future contract, that contract price changes, but mark to market keeps on coming in your account. So, at the end of the day, it means the same thing that you are buying at price at which you entered the contract. Are you done writing this? Let's practice now. Now. let me just prove you that how we can have two possible formulas here what formulas we have seen as of now if this is my spot this is where i get my dividend this is my forward what we did as of now is we took that spot and we took it forward for a year we took the future value then we took the dividend and we reduced the amount of dividend so this is future value of spot minus future value of dividend what i can also do is if this is my spot and this is my dividend i can take present value of dividend and reduce that here and s minus present value of dividend let's say that number is x and take it forwards again and it it would be the same thing you're just juggling around with numbers right so let's do an example and let's solve it using both the methods and let's see if it tallies spot price is 200 and 50 expected dividend in 3 months is 40 expected dividend in 6 months is 20 it seems company is going to liquidate with so much of dividend expected dividend in 15 months is 30 contract expiry 12 months risk free rate of return so my is 10% per annum so you have to calculate theoretical no arbitrage forward or future price no 10% per annum it nothing is mentioned we simply assume annual compounding How much? Two hundred and eleven point zero five is the first answer I've received. Zero seven, okay. Zero seven, okay.
टू हंड्रेड एंड सेम आपका कितना है टू वन थ्री पॉइंट जीरो फाइव जीरो सिक्स ओके गुड टू वन वन ओके हाउ मेनी फ्यू गेटिंग टू वन वन अनिकेत मयांक जीजो भूपेंद्र विशाल यू गॉट टू वन वन ये शैलेश क्विक टू वन सिक्स प्रिंसेस गॉट टू वन सिक्स गेल सौरभ टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टीन टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टीन ओके लेट्स डू इट टूगेदर फर्स्ट वॉट विल डू इज वी विल टेक द फ्यूचर वैल्यू फॉर ऑल द अमाउंट एंड सॉल्व इट इन द सेकेंड इंस्टेंस वी विल टेक प्रेजेंट वैल्यू फॉर ऑल द अमाउंट एंड सॉल्व एंड चेक इफ द आंसर इज करेक्ट नाउ सिंस वी वॉन्ट टू हैव प्रिंस सिंस वी डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू लूज डेसीमल्स वी आर गोइंग टू यूज मेमरी स्लॉट्स वी डोट वॉन्ट टू राइट डाउन एनीथिंग दिस इज थ्री मंथस दिस इज सिक्स मंथस दिस इज ट्वेल्व मंथस As of now, my spot price is two hundred and fifty. First dividend that I get is forty. Second is twenty. The third one is irrelevant. That's after my expiry, so I don't worry about it. Now, let's take the future value of two fifty first. Second clear TVM. Two fifty present value. Ten IY. One N. One N compute future value. This number is negative. Use plus minus key to make it positive. Say STO one. Have you stored that in the first memory slot? Okay. Now say second clear TVM. For how many months do we have to take future value? Nine months. So that's how many years? Point seven five. Second clear TVM. Forty is present value. Point seven five is N. Ten is I Y. Point seven five N. Ten is I Y. Compute future value. This number is negative. Let it remain negative. Say S T O two. So this I have saved in the first slot. This I have saved in the second slot. S T O two. Are we done here? That number we have saved negative. Why? Because we anyways have to reduce it. Second clear T V M. Twenty is the present value. Second clear TVM. Twenty is the present value. Point five is N. Ten is IY. Compute future value. The number would be negative again. Say STO three. Now RCL one plus RCL two plus RCL three. RCL one, which is future value of this, plus RCL two, which was a negative number. Plus RCL three, how much is that? Two one one. So which means that those people who got two one three, they probably changed the compounding conventions. There's a possibility that while taking future value of three months and six months, you might have changed the compounding conventions. Now should we do it by taking present value of all of them? Hmm? Everyone okay? Anyone struggling to get the answer here? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so let's take present value for all of them. Second clear TVM, two fifty STO one, a positive two fifty STO one. I we just store that in the first memory slot. Second clear TVM forty future value. We have to bring it backwards for how many months? Three months. So how many years? Point two five. So point two five is N. Ten is IY. Compute present value. That's a negative number. STO two. Let that number ne remain negative. Say STO two. Second clear TVM twenty is future value. Point five is N. Ten is IY. Compute present value. That number is negative again. Say STO three. Now what we have done? This is in the first slot a positive number. This is in the second slot present value forty. This is in the third slot. These two are negative. We are expected to reduce this, reduce forty and reduce twenty. So RCL one plus RCL two plus RCL three. 
RCL one plus RCL two plus RCL three. How much is this? One ninety one. This is the present value of all the three amounts. Now, second clear TVM, that number will still remain on the screen as it is. Now make that number as present value. So press PV. Now say one is N. Ten is IY. Compute future value. Again, it would be same. Two one one point zero five. So either bring this amount backwards, reduce them here and take future value, or take this amount forwards, reduce them from future value of two fifty. The answer has to be same. And then we have to learn not to write these numbers. We can save them in the memory slots and solve. That will save us significant time and accuracy. Any questions or doubts? Should I increase the level? Let us say now we are looking at a forward contract where underlying asset is Nifty. So underlying asset is now a index. For simplicity, I'm keeping the spot price as rounded to sixty-six hundred. So let's say that spot price is sixty-six hundred as of now. risk free rate of return in our country as of now is let's say 7.85% it's not compounded continuously but i'm assuming compounded continuously okay so risk free rate of return 7.85% compounded continuously i am looking at maturity of 6 months i am looking at maturity of 6 months now my question to you is that does index pay any dividend it doesn't but do the constituent security of this index pay dividend yes so will their values reduce when they pay dividend after dividend they will become ex dividend value will reduce if their value will reduce they paying dividend constituent securities paying dividend will they reduce the value of nifty yes so if i do not account for it i am making a mistake but the question is how do i account for those 50 securities dividend as of now so with index if you would go to bsc or nsc website there comes a number which is called dividend yield that they don't give you a amount of dividend they give you a dividend yield that on an average how much dividend is paid now see different companies will pay dividend at different time so again you cannot have a discrete number here so generally this number is given as a continuous compounding so in india generally it comes out to be about 2% so 2% compounded continuously now find out theoretical no arbitrage forward price this is per annum this is per annum compounded continuously Six seven nine five. How many of you got this? Please raise your hands. Okay. Six seven nine zero. Nine five point nine zero. Is that it? Your nine zero is six seven nine zero. Ha! Huh, how much? Nine five. Nine five. So let's understand the logic. In earlier case, what did we do? We said future value of spot minus future value of dividend, right? So what is dividend? It's a benefit. So what we are concluding as of now is that if there is a dividend, future value of that is to be reduced. Now that if benefit is given in percentage terms, it's all the more easier for us. Spot is equal to e raised to r minus dividend yield into t. So, which means while taking future value, we will simply take future value at seven point eight five minus two, five point eight five percent for six months. So, how do you do that? Second clear TVM. 
सेकेंड क्लियर टीवीएम फाइव पॉइंट एट फाइव परसेंट फाइव पॉइंट एट फाइव परसेंट ओके सो दैट वुड बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव एट फाइव ऑन योर स्क्रीन एज ऑफ नाउ इन टू पॉइंट फाइव विच इज हाफ ऑफ इट सो वॉट यू अचीव इज यूर इज दिस न्यूमरेटर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई पॉइंट फाइव यू गॉट दिस रेस टू द पावर इज वॉट यू हैव सेकेंड ई रेस टू एक्स दिस इज योर फ्यूचर वैल्यू फैक्टर मल्टीप्लाइड विथ सिक्सटी सिक्स हंड्रेड हाउ मच पॉइंट नाइन जीरो एनी क्वेश्चन एनी डाउट ये यू वॉन्ट मी टू रिपीट दिस अगेन गौरव लेट्स डू इट टूगेदर नाउ सेवन पॉइंट एट फाइव माइनस टू इक्वल टू सेवन पॉइंट एट फाइव माइनस टू इक्वल टू इज इट फाइव पॉइंट एट फाइव नाउ प्रेस द पर्सन बटन इज इट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव एट फाइव इन टू पॉइंट फाइव इक्वल टू सो इट्स हाफ ऑफ दैट दिस वॉट यू कैलकुलेटेड इज दिस द पार नाउ से सेकेंड इज टू एक्स सो इट इज गिवन यू फ्यूचर वैल्यू फैक्टर वन पॉइंट जीरो टू कुछ होगा मल्टीप्लाई दैट विथ स्पॉट प्राइस सिक्सटी सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड देन यू हैव द आंसर आशीष अभी टूगेदर यो शुड आई इंक्रीज द लेवल ओके दिस वन आई एम श्योर यू हैव फन स्पॉट प्राइस टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी expected dividend in 3 months is 30 expected dividend in 9 months is 60 continuously compounded rate of return 8% per annum Calculate theoretical no arbitrage future price for a forward contract with maturity of fifteen months. There is a trick, so you need to be careful here. You have expected amount of dividend and you have a continuously compounded rate of return. Karo. This is eight percent per annum, unless otherwise mentioned. A rate is always per annum rate. वन एटी वन पॉइंट थ्री आपका एटी थ्री था एटी वन था हाँ यहाँ पे वन सेवेंटी नाइन कहाँ से आ रहा है वन सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव तुषार सोमिया
<laughs> Should we do this together? Hmm? Let's draw a timeline. Some less noise would be appreciated, Mohit. This is time zero. This is three months. This is nine months. This is fifteenth month. As of now, we have a price of two fifty. This is where we get thirty. This is where we get sixty. Now, the only trick in this question was that the rates are given discrete, whereas the dividend is sorry, the rates are given continuous, where the dividend is discrete. Isn't it that you have a continuous rate and the dividend is discrete? So there are multiple ways in which we can approach this. But what we'll do is we will keep that rate continuous as it is. Okay. So let's take the future value of this 250 first. Second clear TVM is not required. Eight percent button. So say eight, then say percent. We have to take it for how many months? Fifteen. So into fifteen divided by twelve equal to. So how much is that? Ten. Point one zero is what you have on your screen, correct? Second e raised to x, so that will give you a future value factor which would be slightly higher than one point one, correct? Multiplied with one two hundred and fifty, so this is where you get future value of this two fifty. Once you've got future value of two fifty, say STO one, put that into your first memory slot, okay? Then this thirty you have to take future value for. How many months? Twelve months, which is one year. So, eight percent. Second e raised to x. It's anyways one year, so no adjustment. Second e raised to x multiplied with thirty equal to. Now this number is positive. Use plus minus key to make it negative, and then say STO two. So future value of thirty. We've put in the second memory slot, and we've made that negative. Then the third one, from nine months to fifteen months, it's a gap of how many months? Six months. So, eight percent, eight percent, which is zero point zero eight into six divided by twelve equal to, which is zero point zero four. Okay. Second e raised to x. This is your future value factor into sixty equal to. Into sixty equal to. Use plus minus key now. Then say equal to, and then store it in the third memory slot. So future value of sixty we've stored in the third memory slot by making it negative. Then simply RCL one plus RCL two plus RCL three. RCL one plus two plus RCL three. How much? One eighty one point three four. So this was the correct answer. How many of you got this? Is it? Any doubts? Any questions? Any part you want me to repeat again? Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yes. The only risk in that is it would not be exactly eight point three three. It would be eight point three 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 some decimals. So then that rate that you save, it has to be saved number. You cannot manually insert eight point three three. Save that and then reinsert. The answer would be exactly same with all the decimals. But if you, yes, they can be. Options can be really, really close to each other. And especially when we go to forex at level one, it was easy. But in forex, the calculations happen on pip, right? Up to fourth decimal. So there would be differences of fourth or third decimal as well. So that means we have to be crystal clear with the decimals right from the beginning. And it's a good practice. Don't write anything. Store everything. Just remember what you store where. Hmm? <laughs> yes. Okay. So we'll take a small break, ten minutes, and then we will meet again. This was just a teaser introduction. The real introduction, real intensive calculation is yet to come.